Hi, my name is Tim Schobel, and I'm a NetSuite consultant with Business Solution Partners. And today we're going to be talking about case management. So, support cases are used to track issues that your customers report and the responses that your support representatives give. Uh, cases are created when your customers report problems, ask questions, or otherwise need to communicate with you. And cases can be created in one of four ways. A support representative can create a case record in NetSuite for customers who call in. And from the administrator that can be found here under lists, support, and cases new. And this would be the form that a support representative would fill out. Uh, a customer can also complete an online case form. A customer can send an email to your support address that automates the creation of a case in NetSuite. And the customer can also click the contact support link in the customer center or on your website to fill out an external case record. Now, once a case is created here, I just need to enter a subject, company, various information will automatically populate, uh, contact information like the email, phone number. Uh, choose to assign this to a particular user. I'll just assign it to myself since I'm the one entering this case. Um, and I'll give this a status of in progress. And we see the incident date and time automatically populating with when I opened up the form. I can add more specific information here, like an item that the user is experiencing an issue with, a specific serial number if applicable. Um, I can classify the cases by case type question, problem, concern, or others that could be added. The case issue, uh, case origin, in this example, like a customer called in. I can add other quick notes if I need to. Um, I can record the incoming message from the customer. I can add an outgoing response from the support rep. I can choose to copy some of my response to the customer and copy other employees as needed. I can also uh, choose to not send my response to the customer and keep it internal only. Note that uh, checking one option uh, uh, makes the other option unavailable. And I can also record uh, other CRM related activity here, with phone calls, tasks, events, I can attach files to this case, and I can also enter other additional uh, user notes. On the escalation sub-tab, I have the ability to escalate this case to an additional support rep, and I can review that history as well. And then we just have the system information tab. So that's really your standard case form there. I'm just going to save this. And I'm also going to spend a little bit of time explaining each of these lists that we saw here. So under setup, support, support preferences, I can configure the uh, preferences around this module. So I can have default case profile here. I can default the responses to send to the customer or to be internal. I can have other default preferences here and default statuses for cases, depending on uh, what stage they're in. For a new case, it'll be defaulted to not started. If it's grabbed or assigned to a user, it'll default to in progress. Uh, we have a reopen status, an escalated status, closed status. Um, we also have priorities for new cases, high, medium, or low, like set here, and a case lockout period. I can configure the notifications. Uh, related to my cases here. On external, this is describing the external case form redirect URL. So this is saying that when a user submits an external case form, they'll be redirected to whatever URL you enter in this field. In this case, it's netsuite.com. Inbound email, this is the email to which a customer would send uh, their case. And this will automate the creation of a case in NetSuite. So if I um, you know, send an email to this address and enter a subject line, uh, that subject line will be the uh, case subject in NetSuite, and whatever message 
and send the email will be in that customer message uh, field over here. So whatever the subject is on the email, it'll populate in this field, and whatever the message is will be the initial uh, customer message. And then on the ordering subtab here of support preferences, I can see various lists of case statuses, priorities, types, origins, and issues. So by default, uh, when uh, you know, if, if you're just using this module, uh, this case issues should be blank. These are, uh, they're not going to have anything showing up in this list initially, um, but a customer can add to this list as needed. Um, case statuses, uh, these are all standard with the exception of on hold. On hold is typically another one that is created and added to this list. Case priorities can be either high, medium, or low. These are included by default. Case types by default include question, problem, or concern, but several others have been added to this list by this client in this uh, test account here. Case origins, I believe these are all um, default, but these have been somewhat customized for this test account with the uh, custom descriptions here. But yes, um, usually it's web, email, phone, other facts. And uh, yeah, as mentioned, these case issues, usually it's just a blank list, but this can be um, tailored to your needs. There's also various uh, other features here. We have case profiles. There's only one here by default, but I can choose to create a new case profile, and I can make these uh, subsidiary specific if I need to. I can call this maybe the US2 case profile. I can give this a custom from name on uh, outgoing support messages uh, that are, um, you know, uh, for cases that are associated with this profile. I can have an outgoing uh, you know, from email address here. I can have a subsidiary filter, so I can make this specific to the US2 subsidiary. I can, here I can enter an anonymous customer record that's associated with the subsidiary. And the way this works is for uh, a user who submits either an online form or uh, sends an inbound email to that email address, assuming that the, e that the email associated with the customer is not recognized in NetSuite or not associated with an existing customer record in NetSuite, that will default to an anonymous customer record. And support uh, rep who is editing the case can choose to change this information or uh, if, I, if I edit this, if this came in, it says anonymous customer here, I can change that information. I can create a new customer record that's actually, uh, you know, has a, a correct contact information and so on. And once I actually get all this information saved, it should show up back here on the case. I also can enter uh, here specific uh, notification templates that uh, might have subsidiary specific branding. So really what a case profile enables you to do is to apply different configurations to your support cases. And using case profiles provides you that control over the branding of your support communication. So I can create custom uh, customer notification templates that have, you know, US2 specific logos and branding on them. Whereas, um, if I leave this here, view this case, existing case profile, this one um, might be associated with a different subsidiary. This currently doesn't have a subsidiary filter, but you know, by default, we can say this will have the branding of the parent company then. And this also has uh, the standard notification templates associated with them. I also have under here set up support case rules and case territories. So case rules and case territories here are ways that you can automate the assignment of cases to a particular support rep. So here you can create case rules which basically specify certain criteria for the case to meet. And then you can build case territories using those rules. So here I've got this territory. And what this is saying is that this rule, if the criteria of this rule is met, assign the case to this support rep. 
in that way, when a case comes in uh, through any of the any of the ways I described, any of the four ways I've already mentioned, like uh, even if I saved a case um, without an assigned support rep and in a uh, not started status, they might automatically assign to the support rep based on the criteria specified. And then the case will uh, go into an in progress status automatically. So that's something to think about as well. Um, cases can be automatically assigned. Also, uh, there is a way to flag a particular employee as a support rep um, under the HR or human resources sub tab of an employee record. Uh, you'll typically find a couple of check boxes. Um, one of them will be for a support rep. If you check that on an employee record, that makes that employee that available for uh, grabbing support cases. So um, that is pretty much it there, but I'll also draw some attention here to escalations. We can also set up escalation rules to automate the escalation of a case based on a certain criteria. Um, for example, we could say if a case has been uh, sitting there without any activity, um, and with a particular status for over you know, three hours or three days or within some sort of time limit beyond which it should be assigned to a different uh, support rep or escalated. And now I'll just go back here into the support preferences and I just want to demo the inbound email functionality here. So if I copy and paste this, I'm going to enter in a new email. Here. If I copy and paste that email address, enter a subject. If I send this now and go back here to my list of support cases, that should show up. Might need to refresh it. Yep. And we can see that that could work. But uh, that that did create a case here, and I could just grab this. This is in a not started state. But when I grab it, we'll see it automatically saves it. In, in in progress state, and now I am the assigned support representative. And you can see here the origin was email and the inbound email address. Um, you can set up email forwarding. So if you have a support at your company's uh, domain dot com sort of email address, you can set up forwarding so that you don't need to provide this long, complicated email address to your customers. Instead, you can just give them your standard support email address. And you can set up forwarding between that and this email so that you can automate the creation of new cases in that suite. Also, there's the external case form. So here we've got online case forms. And I'll just view this one here. This is an online support form. Um, this can be customized through HTML. Over here, Got some other information under the setup appearance, custom code, external. Here we are. We can see the uh, publishable form URL. If I click this, it will take me to the actual form. And I can enter in a subject. Company name. Specify case issue here. This is pulling in from that list. Um, and I can enter in a message. And I can click submit. And this should now redirect me to the redirect URL. That would be netsuite.com. 
going back into my list of cases, I should now see that showing up. Yep. And that uh, is showing up right here. I'll grab this one again. And here we can see the uh, origin is now online. And yeah, that's that's pretty much uh, the you know, three ma major ways. I mean, the the external case form uh, is accessed through Customer Center, but um, that's that's three of the four main ways for generating a case in NetSuite. And that pretty much covers it. So that's it for calls resolution.